motion out there for the minutes? I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes to submit it. Second. I'll second it. Is there any discussion about it before we vote? All those in favor? Pass by the. All right, agenda. Old business. Um, we had a discussion last time, two weeks ago, about um, the timber harvesting, if you remember. And um, that's where I was upstairs talking uh, about that to see if there was any direction for us or, or whatever. And um, to kind of bring you up to date, remember anyway, that. Um, we had control over the timber harvesting, then the state took control, and then the state, um, it didn't work the way they wanted it to work, and so essentially it came back to us. And so, as far as our ordinance is concerned, um, what we are doing now is exactly what it says. There was a time in there, apparently, that we were not. And uh, it was unbeknownst to any of us, um, and apparently, unbeknownst, as you saw, to Steve Botkin, uh, who was here two weeks ago, um, which is, you know, his part was probably a little bit, uh, I don't know, he was probably a little annoyed, or to say the least. And um, so, so what we've come to determine okay, is there's not much we have to do at this point in time. Basically, we are where, where, where it is. So uh, that being said, um, we're, I'm going to get in touch with him and then um, see if I can at least tell him that we're going to try and keep him in the loop. And I don't mean necessarily just us because we may not even be in the loop completely. Okay? Questions about that? So we have two things here that I'm not uh, privy to here. I don't know anything about the first one. What do you want to do first? The best, uh, <laughs> I do have one quick question. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Just a quick one. Um, just comparing the chart. This is about the timber harvesting. Yeah, we're on page. Um, yeah. Um, page twelve of one hundred and two in the chart, Rory uses yeah. uh, timber harvesting for commercial. There's four zones which are denoted there, and then when you look in the footnote, um, only two zones are denoted. Um, being shoreland and resource protection. Um, the aquifer protection district is not denoted in the footnote. I was just wondering um, what the exact intent there was. Which footnote are you referring to on page uh, Well, it says R4. So when you look on page 15 of 102, look at number 4. In the parentheses, not just in the shoreline and resource protection. I was just wondering why aquifer protection district um, with all aspect district districts aren't mentioned in the footnote, there. or if they're just it's just assumed that they are included in that footnote. Is that what you would guess, Ken? That it is an assumption. If it's not there, it's not there. I was so, just wondering so if perhaps you know that was if that was intended. Tom, do you remember when the um, thing was uh, drafted? I would have to agree with Ken. If it's not stated as being covered by R four, it's not. Uh, um, it's not right. Right. Should we correct the land use chart? Are you trying to bring in um, aquifer protection? Well, it's denoted in the chart, but not in the footnote. I mean, I'm just trying to, it's not consistent. You must have put it together. Or just, or just you know, just they don't say the same thing. Um, I'm on page 12 in the So, footnotes, similar to notes, aren't really part of the ordinance. There is guidelines, so when we click a 
cases that say that the notes, when you see uh, the ordinance and see the note underneath, it's like a commentary version of it, isn't really part of the ordinance. So, so you're saying that the chart, the ordinance, would cover automatically all four sections because that's where it's stating uh, that it's taking place. Yeah. Regardless of what the footnote says. That's what I was kind of thinking. Like, just simplify it instead of writing out all four in the footnote. But I, I wasn't there. When I was yeah. I suggest that, and that might be the other way around. Yeah, the either way. The footnote, I would think, they, they both have standing, but whereas the footnote um, is a refinement of the multi-use uh, of the land use chart. I would think the footnote would have legal, you know. And this is a little different. It's a footnote to the chart, so that may have more versus when you have an ordinance and there's a, uh, we've got a couple of spots in it that has a note underneath that kind of just gives you a little guidance of what they're talking about. Or a reference. Uh, this page on 73 has a note. When it says note, and it says for the purpose of blah, 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 it's kind of just giving you a guidance. So that's not a section I can quote as somebody in violation of. Uh, page 73 had an area that was a note, and that just happened to be a timber harvest section, too. There's not very many spots where it is. It's, but, but it's also not going in that direction. Well, you've got that I mean, it's, it's pointed out exactly where it is in the chart. Yeah. And yeah. so the other one it just doesn't appear to be strong enough to match, to match the chart. Yep. But you think that the second one is the one that uh, has more meaning? Well, I, I think to clear it up, you could, you could go into the text of the timber harvesting ordinance and dig out where it stipulates that a forester has to be retained for management of the cut in the shoreland and the RP. Um, and you, you'll see that that doesn't state anything or have anything bearing with the overlay district of active protection or the loss of the river district. So the text would further buttress the footnote. And I think um, probably as a, as a correction, maybe R4 could be omitted on the, on the two, on those two last two entries on the land use chart. Would be my quick take on that. Anyway. Just for clarity's sake. I, I, I'd like to see it one way or the other just so we can be easier to consistent through yeah program. just consistent I'm not <coughs> though I do think um, little office possibly might be just completely overlapped by shoreland and in resource protection I'm not sure a good part of it yeah yeah but the aquifer protection is quite a bit bigger than the other district exactly it's all over town and it's not yeah the shoreland though it's not bad for them to have a forest or they do those areas it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not asking too much of it it's just then you know because that would, that would increase uh, the work Steve Bodkin was looking at by far. Don't you have to give us the way of the harvest before it's not harvest? Only in the shoreline zone. So, so what would it take to get this corrected? Whichever way, you know, is the better way, what would it take? Does it take if a full we're talking, change? it would be town meeting vote. Mm -hmm. And it would just be a strikeout and underline. Mm -hmm. So in the chat, if the board's thought was to focus on uh, aquifer protection to remove it, just strike out and change it to uh, P. <coughs> Do you have access to anything that would give us more information as to which way that goes? You mean by which way that goes? You know, whether we decided that we were going to eliminate <coughs> The R4 on the chart, or whether we're going to include the other two districts in the, mm -hmm. in the note? No, my sense is, is, as I thought I stated, that I think the note is clearer than, than the uh, major chart. Um, the correction would be, as, as Kenny indicated, to cross out the uh, R4 applicability to the loss of and our kind of protection. So that would be and change to a P. And, and you're comfortable with that, Kevin? Um, well, I think I was, 
I don't know if we need to. I, I think we could think about it and come back to the next meeting and see that. Okay. okay. See what so people what I think. Asking, I just bring it out. Um, did we have a couple of meetings back that we that we went on that gravel pit? Didn't the possibly situation you discussed there because one overlapped the other, and we found that our ordinances were stringent, more stringent than theirs, so we're better off just leaving it alone. They're talking about Patton come in. Mm -hmm. We found that we were better off holding our own one and we said to use their ordinances. Right. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think the timber harvesting ordinance, I don't know if, Ken, if you've had any chance to wait through that a little bit, but there's some hair on that ordinance that I think Stephen has, could maybe point to some places where we could uh, Get better clarity out of uh, language, and I, I read through some parts of it today, and uh, I had to light up. <laughs> it gets extremely confusing when you're talking about the state guidelines after 274 towns throughout the state. Yeah, that's, as is, and and that's uh, that's state language we had to put in for when that was triggered and stuff, and it, it's so confusing. It's too much. We need to strike it out and move on. Yeah. But I, I'll touch base with the DEP. I figured that'd be a November issue. Yeah. Issue once we get into but, that. But let's keep Stephen um, at our elbow on that. I would strongly suggest that we need his guidance and support on what we do. Pertain to Tim Hobson. So then let's just, as far as this part's concerned, let's at least hold for the time being until we come together with everything, perhaps in November. Um, this is not going to change anything drastically between now and June anyway. So we just have to remember to come back to this. So that's aquifer protection right there. I mean, this is Great East to uh, Acton Ridge Road there. I mean, this is all aquifer protection. All down through here, running square and through Turk's Pit. Uh, so there's quite a bit of aquifer protection areas in town. Yeah, that would far exceed. That would put the steam through the roof. Yeah, yeah, the two acres almost did. So we're thinking at this time, and we'll firm it up uh, next month or so, that the last R4 in aquifer protection possibly striking out. I would leave the little ossipy in and then fix the footnote for the little ossipy because it's really similar to shoreland zoning, except for it goes 500 feet versus the 250. Yeah, it's two weeks. Too extensive. So we've taken we, we, at this point we're tentative as to what we're going to do, and uh, we'll just hold off until we tackle the timber harvest section in a couple of months. Okay. Everybody else, all right with that? All right, then, Mr. Ron, with the uh, ordinance section that you've got for us. Yeah. Actually, the little Oscopy looks like it goes up over 1,000 feet. Uh -huh. That was 750, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that anyways. here for this so this is an expansion of a legally existing structure within the shoreline zone of resource protection usually this is around the lake so anything created the law went into effect in 1989 anything created before that can be expanded legally 30 percent 30 percent additions the problem I'm facing now is in 2011 we expanded resource protection in a lot of areas out of town outside of the shoreland zone. 
and it's kind of a fuzzy area as far as can these areas be expanded 30 percent so I'm looking on guidance for the board to see if that's something we're thinking or something you clearly don't want to consider protection in this area here so all resource protection Healy Way coming out for my flat ground road or so um, Newer house built right there, 2008 or nine or so. Uh, he's got a house in there, and we've got a bunch of them on these lanes. It's a subdivision we did up there. So when the resource protection overlay comes on top of it, the whole buffer zone, the house is all in the buffer zone. Built before zoning came. Now it's in resource protection. It was in general purpose probably at the time. Now it's in resource protection. So the ordinance says on B, um, that the structure had to have been there since 1989. So the ordinance is set for shoreland zoning in the shoreland zone. Looking to see if the board would consider an existing structure built before 2011 or whenever the shoreland zoning, them being allowed to expand 30% or you're in the resource protection, uh, you've got a legal use non-conforming structure, and no, you can't do any expansions. Which is what it is right now. Technically. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this would kind of go contrary to what town meeting just decided on. Well, they had decided that you've got to make it lot in the resource protection you're not getting anything. So this is somebody that has a house, and I mean, I mean we've got several we can take a look at, but. That was, uh, that was supposed to be an undeveloped lot, was that right, Ken? We That's how the state's board version. In the planning board version, we had taken it also be a shed or an expansion. Right. Outside of the shoreline zone. But not the state. So this is kind of like half of the planning board version. Well, so this is exactly that. You've got an existing there, place. Uh, Zoning came in on top of you. Uh, so Sonic is. Would it be like the best possible piece you'd be asking to possibly move back to or not? I uh, the ordinance reads that you can't get any closer to the um, resource, but I mean you can make it a conditional use if you want to do a 30% in the resource protection, it's conditional use. But this is a subdivision we did, I think, those six or so, Saunders Way, off of Fox's Ridge, which two, three, uh, four or five houses maybe on, on that subdivision. That's all in resource protection now. 
Um, up by the Lebanon line, on the left hand side. Is that the, the old farm there they sold off a piece of A little before it, so right around uh, 1187. <laughs> So, I mean, the board can think about it, we can talk about it next week, but I didn't want to start working on an ordinance if everyone's thinking, uh, no, it's resource protection, we don't want your house in there, we don't want mind uh, making it bigger. The house is already standing, right? Or maybe there's a cap on it. You're allowed 30%, but the maximum is 1,500. Because if we look at... So 30% of the shoreland zone, most of them are little camps. 30% of not much is not much. So you can look at that, and a lot of these are, uh, you know, they're homes. It's about a 20 Is this the same one again that you're talking about? No. So show me an example, if you can, of a house that's in resource protection, but that if we were to change it to a conditional use, you could move it back. Is there such an animal out there? Move the... Home back to allow the increase. I would think the increase would just be like a bathroom addition on the right-hand side or something like that. So it would be just an addition that would be... Out, it wouldn't be relocating the home unless shed, the, it could be a shed, right? It would have to be attached to the house. Okay. So yeah. we wouldn't allow the freestanding. Uh, say, in the case of a, um, say that was a house fire and they wanted to rebuild, they could do their 30%. We could have something written in that said that they would, you know, if the, if the structure was damaged. That you know they would relocate further back if it was. Yeah, so that's already in the ordinance. If they're in the yeah. resource protection, the yeah. place burns down. It's coming for best possible location yeah. for you guys for relocation. <laughs> so and again, they're not small homes. They're not tiny little 24, 24 camps. Which in one aspect, the 30 percent really isn't fair because 30 percent of 24 by 24, or somebody that has 100 by 100, 30 percent is much yeah. greater. Yeah. And the state tried to clean it up a little bit, but it's not very helpful either. So with this particular one, um, new home constructed 2008 in the buffer zone, the resource, probably the Salmon Falls River, it's all in flood zone, coming off the river and the stream. So with this one here, um, you wouldn't be able to build onto the back, you could only build onto a side that wouldn't be encroaching on the resource. And I'm only bringing this one up because it's sold. And I thought as soon as the buyer found out it was in resource protection, there was going to be an issue. But when we use the word conservation land somewhat, he loved the idea that nobody can build, nobody this and that. But then he's thinking, well, could I do a garage in the future? Can I do this? Am I allowed to spend 30%? like everybody else in the resource and shoreland zone that was there before 1989. So the only difference is we've changed our shoreland zone and made it more stringent versus the state's version in 1989. This particular one, probably. That'd be my guess. 08, 09, something like that. It came in before we did the zoning change in 10, 11. 
How many lots are we talking, do you think? Approximately 50? Yeah, 50, 70 in that range. What effect will have on the overall? You're not supposed to be getting any closer to the resource. All these houses were here prior to zoning changes, so they were in rural. Now they're in critical rural, or now they're in uh, resource protection. So before zoning came, they could have done the garage addition, they could have done this, they could have done that. Now it's in resource protection, so they can't do any of them. No expansion whatsoever. Truly, is how the ordinance is read. So. But if you give it to one in section, you can make it for one person. It would be for everybody. That's right. Correct. It's across the board. Yeah. So it goes across the board. What damage will that do to the resource protection area? I would think 30% um, expansion. You're not getting any closer to the resource, <coughs> and you're doing stormwater mitigation, whether it's drip line trenches, um, plunge pools, rain gardens, infiltration beds. I mean, something's being mitigated, so no additional stormwater is coming off the property. The other thing, feel somewhat sorry for them. If it's in resource protection, none of this area can count towards lot size. So he has, I think there's maybe 200 square feet on the lot that counts for lot size. So if this was a greater lot, I mean, he's only got a little bit of area that's out of resource protection here and a little bit up here. Uh, this particular individual, when he sold this house, he created some land over here for the buyer. So if he ever wanted to do a garage, he could be out of the resource protection with this particular one. They, he, uh, the seller still had a little bit of land so he could work with the new buyer and, and give him something over here just in case. But that would be a detached garage if, if that's what he was thinking, doing, um, 140, 150 feet away from where his house is. So it's clear that no, he couldn't do a garage over here unless it was attached to his house. And if the board was thinking, that would be part of his 30% expansion, which is calculated square foot and cubic feet as far as currently in the shoreland zone. But my biggest issue is in the shoreland zone, it says that the house was there before 1989. Oddly enough, no resource protection has been expanded in the state except for Australia. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, I don't think so. Oh. If it's in area to protect, it needs but, to be But protected. if we look at I mean, this house, for example, mm -hmm. there probably is no mitigation of runoff if the house was built back in, you know, in before we had the okay. strong water ordinance. So, so if we change and allow, for example, the person to come in and put a garage on If you had the 30%. Yeah, if we, yeah. And, and so now when we, if we were to do a conditional use for, we could do it for the whole thing. Uh, a building permit, um, if I could write him a building permit for a garage, stormwater would be automatic. He would need to comply with the stormwater regulations, so. Um, but the entire construction, the entire building, house, garage also, not just the garage. Correct. No, he would need that to mitigate the stormwater. So in a sense, we could be making it better for... Every time we touch it. Yeah. Just my own information. The stormwater really not a lot. This is as far as you know, dispersing the stormwater. Many years ago, I believe it was I think the Salmon Fall Watershed, as represented by company. And we were kind of concerned too about the massive amount of water being directed either away from or toward the Salmon Falls River. And we found that a lot of places that we were trying to turn the water away from the river was detrimental because the river flow would slow down and therefore weeds and stuff that could grow. Of course, we're looking at using the water to run a mill, mm -hmm. so we don't want any weeds in there. So we, of course, indicted at the University of New Hampshire at the time. But there's some places where you've got to be 
watch out what you're doing because you can turn water away from the river to do more harm than it does by letting it go of it. Because of the volume of water is necessary to keep it at a certain level and a certain speed of, of the current. But that's Going through to keep the weeds from growing. But that's the assumption is, is the water is still being used today for the mills. One of them is, not all of them. Because <laughs> two of them are closed down. Mm -hmm. the, the more important part of the storm water. The thing we were worried about is weeds growing in, in, the, in the river, which would be detrimental to everybody. Mm -hmm. Not only the water supply. I slowed down the water because we had that right where I used to live in San Diego. Mm -hmm. All elephant ears are growing there before it was nice and clear. Because the water slowed down. Mm -hmm. So you're asking us to think about it until next meeting. Give some guidance yeah. as to whether yeah. you want to go through and change yeah. this, or or if the board says uh, no, you've got all you got. So can we look at that between now and um, I guess first of uh, September? Because I think that's the night of the next meeting. Sound good? You okay with that too? Yeah. Okay. I, I would suggest <coughs> when we're doing our homework on that, that we look over existing language, existing language um, starting with 148, page 3. Because there's a lot of um, intent here. And the, the sense of it is essentially that non conforming uses shall not be expanded. Uh, which has been kind of our, uh, one of our uh, was, golden rules. Yeah, and the exception for that is in the shoreland resource protection, the 30% rule. So 411, uh, 1411.2 talks about that allowance. All right, any other comments, questions on it? Everybody good with that then? Okay. Uh, that's a practical location.
So really they're shrinking the house a little bit and then stretching it lengthwise. So is this the cathedral or is it a loft or what's the deal here? In the is that a is this a loft area or is it correct, a, yeah. Yeah, there's a living space on the second floor. Okay. And will it be a second, I mean a two-story building? Basement. What I see here is a 30% increase on what I would see on this one. So I haven't gone through this. Just came in today. I haven't gone through all the 30% numbers, but really the board would just be saying um, number-wise how far from the water you guys feel comfortable with. Uh, it's tough because there's not much to the road, it's already too close to the road. It's a unique lot. Because you've got the road right behind it, Put which really is unique, but you've got, there is a lot of land back there, but the board's never moved anybody back across the street and behind this other house. That would be the only spot. And, and that's the house that someone else owns? This one here, 17 years. Chopped right out of the middle of their property. Yeah. So, I mean, there is land back behind the 100 foot zone, but it, it's not flat or anything, that's for sure. And they don't get all over there. 250. <laughs> 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 one does never cease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's the contour lines, 20 foot contours there. So it's, it's kind of steep back there. Two thousand. 
when I wrote the permit, did the inspection in 2000 as well. It's behind the house up by the road. And the wall would be where? Usually, um, they would remove the house, build the road down to the lake, put the well in, and then work their way out, build the house, and build so the well. Yeah. So, so when we go back, if we were to go back six feet, the septic is still somewhere between the house and the road? Yeah. You're still in that up on the back side. Well, what's anybody think? So, yeah, just just that the the thirty percent expansion rule covers volumetric and floor space. So somebody could take a multiple story small I footprint did. house and spread it out into a single foundation with a much larger rain drainage area. That would be permissible. That's what this looks like. I didn't really listen to your question because I thought that you were talking that. Um, Mr. Marston owns a house that was built in 2000, <laughs> and then resource protection came on top of yeah, it. Yeah, he special. enjoys resource protection, he loves the neighbors, but I hadn't really thought this this affected you. I could have picked on you tonight and brought yeah, you. Yeah, you could have brought my house. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was on the pinky. <laughs> he likes the resource protection, he likes the neighbors. I don't mind the 100,000 bucks hit to my house down here. What was your question again? The, the, uh, I understand the basic reasoning, you know, you don't want somebody to take a uh, large different house and build some tall edifice or take some, but it, it appears that the, the environmental impact of the house has more to do with the, the square footage of its roof than anything else. That's the where the water, so this one looks like the house they're proposing to build has a much larger roof area than the existing house does. Now if you're taking all those different roofs. Really? Yeah, it, it would at least be, yeah, it's probably going to have more ground cover. Yeah. And then with the stormwater mitigation, they would be looking at drip line trenches around the perimeter of it, uh, rain guides, infiltration beds, or uh, uh, detention, subgrade detention. So, so many with those modifications, it would likely have less impact. Than Correct, yeah. Uh, some people haven't been doing the drip line trenches and been putting gutters into dry wells. I guess we'll see how those work over time because when the gutters fail, you rip the gutters off and we haven't got anything. But again, the drip line trenches can be filled with um, duck and leaf and stuff like that. Nobody's maintaining that either, but the key to all of it is maintenance free. It's got to be maintenance free and nobody's going to do anything with it. So. There's no building on lot 19. There is a little tiny shed down by the water. Inhabitable? Seasonal? <laughs> camp sweet camp for somebody. Two from... camps for a toilet. <laughs> somebody comes from Newport Beach, California to enjoy Mousin Lake and then then there's probably another property in the same name nearby. This one here. Yeah, that one there. So that's right. their access to the water. Yeah. Um, kind of. So they're not. So number thirty there isn't going to be necessarily faced with a, a house right next to the lot nineteen. So we, there's no way we could uh, look at the possibility of putting them right across the road there. We'd still be able to use a subject to be. As far as sliding it more this way, or over here. Oh, putting it across the street? Well, I'm just thinking they probably still have a pretty good view of the water from there. Um, there isn't going to be a house built right next to it, presumably. And they could be for them. They don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do that. No. Nobody wants to roll between them and the water. They want no. I we, we want to move them 100 feet back if we can, so we, we can look at all the options. Yeah. And, 
the only reason septic system running into the building. Unless they put it behind their house, yeah. which no one wants to do. This existing is septic is there. On that side you put road. that pipe in on the road, you've got a problem with heavy trucks. So this Quinn family, well, they put septic right in the road all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Bleach field, everything. This Manzo family, they because they there's put a space over in there, they could totally do that. It's there. not that far away. Everybody has changed as you know, everyone in the lot in the room is in front of the ship. He's just talking about the whole time. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they don't have to be in that piece. So there's currently out of their house post on lot 19 in that corner there. Right there? Yeah. Plot plan headed is 15 feet. So if they were 15 feet from lot 19 across the street, where would that be? So I have that. I had about 33 feet right in that area there. So there's it from the lot, the proper the corner of the proper one. So if they stayed 15 feet off of lot 19, well, they can get up to 10 feet, can't they? Correct. So if they were 10 feet off of lot 19, and 10 feet off of 17, they would live in 14 feet for a house in that area there. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's just still, too, it's just too small. It is. Okay. Um, and I mean, that's the first area we looked at, and then the I mean the area out behind, and of course it all looks flat on paper, but that incline comes up about 20 feet to get into that general area there, and I mean we're teetering 300 feet back there. The ordinance prohibits odd-shaped lots. I was going to say, if I see a square lot, it's going to be odd because there isn't any other in town. But um, they're all. Now you can call it my house. No, <laughs> it's, it's got a square lot. Not on the block. So, do you think this is unusual enough to take a look at it? You're more than welcome to, but to me, there is between the road and the lake. And, that, and that's the problem with all of the lots we deal with. Yeah. Do you think it would be a problem if they do what they're requesting? Okay. I don't know. Ninety-one feet. Waterfront to the edge of the road, mm -hmm. roughly. And the new um, septic was thousand gallon. We got a thousand gallon tank. Isn't that small for twenty one hundred foot house? It goes by bedroom counts, so it's a three bedroom system. And that's what's expected to be in the new... Correct. New Unless they make an adjustment to it, put a new septic in. They were talking about a new field, too, over onto the side. They just hadn't figured they've got one that's fairly new. And they're looking at cost for that. So it's supposed to be 50 feet from the center of the road, so they were only at 37, I think. So it's 10 feet shy already of the required setback. So I didn't really see a good reason to push, push, push more. New house is 28 feet on the web. So if they went skinnier, 28 is the easier size to build to get your stairs in and stuff. If you shrunk it down to 24, you're just going to allow them to stretch it out further. Mm -hmm. it's not to no, again, two by six with holes and you're at 24, you're going to get 20, <coughs> 23 feet. It shrinks quick. <coughs> Did those drawings go back to you, Ken? No. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. Can that one more time, please? Uh, existing or a site plan? A site plan.
How's the retaining wall? Two feet thick. Somebody owned some concrete when they made it by, I think, about five feet. It's in fairly good shape. Uh, see, bro. Is there anything particular to that being on site that you want to stipulate as, as something that is remediated uh, within this permit? Uh, they're going to vegetate the other areas. They, they'll do their stormwater mitigation. It's a typical, um, not a lot of vegetation, but a lot of, you know, the big pines are still left on the site. Mm -hmm. Is the wall sound, do you think? Uh, the front retaining wall? Yeah. It's in really good shape. I think it's back in the day where you mixture concrete on site by hand. Yeah. You made it two foot thick. You made it two foot thick. You didn't mess around. Long as there was some good stipulation of because of that, uh, I mean it's a pretty narrow apron between the front, which would be there is a, as, as Lincoln was pointing out, there is a ample. Uh, or a probably an increased uh, roof area of pitching to the lake, you guess can. <coughs> if there is, that would be mitigated by um, drip line trenching. Right. I'm, I'm just saying that the, the, uh, with the narrow apron of, of uh, land between their front is a building on the lake side and mm -hmm. the retaining wall. We want to be more attentive than usual to um, uh, revegetating and or improving whatever the hell they can do out front there right now. It looks like a kind of a right a little bit of lawn. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's basically what it is. So I suppose if you're at 60 feet versus 30, if you've got lawn, it's still going to saturate and shed. you got to get the water into the ground. Yeah. Which uh, a better vegetated buff is going to absorb it better than a lawn. Mm -hmm. I, I really would accept it with some pretty stringent uh, uh, stormwater management uh, measures in place. As good as I mean, ideally, you know, the state wouldn't allow, but to put a uh, lip on the retaining wall to stop anything that came down to it somehow, even a rubber razor on the backside or something like that. When we get the uh, stormwater plan, that's something we'd be looking at. Although there's no real erosion from the property either. It's fairly um, absorbed in. Yeah. That'd be a good thing to have during construction on Oh, definitely. Everyone's using the stump grindings, erosion control mulch now, so um, <coughs> that doesn't let it mm -hmm. anything through. A little bit of the wall there. How much space, you know, the grass going down to that wall, how much above the grass is that wall? It looked like it was the same wall on the It was fairly level. It's pretty. It's right on. Yeah, because yeah. this, this fence is probably this fence. Yeah. Same, same structure. Excuse me, structure. Yeah, so it looks so there's about the same. Here's a picture. You can see that picture. So there's a, in the area as it is, right up to the edge. You could enhance that maybe. I don't, I'm not being a stone on a but it might be a little bit enhance that by a little excavation and a, and a gravel filled trench. You know. Right, and uh, right at the back side of the wall, a yeah. little stone. Yeah. It almost looks like that's where the water hits and then drops down because you wouldn't want to undermine the back side of the wall, but um, really you want to mitigate the storm water before it even leaves the house area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mitigate it, and everybody wants to fix it at the water's edge, but really you're going to go up to the driveway to the road and then to the tall spot on the road. If you're the low guy on the road, 
you got to stand on the hills and, and, and get rid of it before it comes on your property. And I think when we review best practical location or even a lot of permits that we issue in the stormwater um, between the Acton Shapley youth and the Acton Wakefield youth conservation guys, they do quite a bit of um, educational outreach for us. All right, Thompson, do you have a motion? I, I move we accept Kenny's recommendation with uh, uh, for the setback of the Manser rebuild um, with uh, good um, stormwater management stringent 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 stormwater management, stringent, 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 stringent management uh, measures in place. Twenty nine feet from the high water and thirty seven from the center of the road. Is there a uh, second? No second. Any other comments on the motion itself? I think I'm looking at the minutes. Okay, well, we didn't vote or anything two weeks ago, I believe, right? No. Not that I know. Was it when you were? I don't think I don't think so. So I think what we'll do is we'll still allow you to vote. We didn't even say anything last time. I know it's in the minutes, but I know we didn't do it. And then in two weeks, we'll switch back to Link. Okay. Yep. All right. So, uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? And then, so, pass this four one. All right. Anything else? <coughs> Run out go through many of the conditions. Hopefully, are. I'm sure Ken's got them pretty well in the end. Stormwater management plan from any of the qualified individuals we use. Right, so you think it would be um, <laughs> the your county uh, conservation? We have extremely hard to get a hold of. Yeah. We've had really, this really good work. This is the Mount Yeah, uh, Acton Chaffee, Betty Smith has done a tremendous job. She is environmental. Specialist. Specialist. Is she not an engineer? She's out of the Raymond um, Sebago area. She's been a great axe asset for that side of the lake. Um, and she's really, really good at uh, coming up with solutions. What's, does she have a company name? Acton Shapley Youth Conservation. So she works right for us. Does she? I don't think she works in the winter. I think they shut down. Acton Lakefield stays going all the time. So. so maybe just point their attention toward that retaining wall, obviously, and yeah. to take, uh, look at the drive, like you were saying, the driveway access. And it's sat at the top of the road and work your yeah. way down. Yeah, so you've got to. Make sure you, you look across the road, since they own across the road as well. Which that mitigates, if you do that, that reduces the storm water leaving your property without doing anything else. So, I mean, if you mitigate the storm water coming onto your property, you do the addition, you have less. But still, most people have. Um, after they do this, and I'm assuming it's about a $400,000 project and it's worth $400,000 the lot, so they've got $800,000, almost a million dollars of investment into that lake staying clean. Good water quality, no invasive species. So once they realize how sensitive it is and how fast it can turn, and they can lose their life savings or their retirement gets cut in half, they become very, very um, concerned about water quality and what their neighbors are doing, usually. So. Are these new owners you're saying? Or? Uh, no, they've had it for a while. Okay, so they're familiar with the house. And, yeah. yeah. That house yeah. that's behind them. How does that impact on the uh, runoff coming into this property? We all live downstream. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. is, there, is it an older house? No mitigation of uh, you know, runoff? Very seldom. Uh, it's almost all trees and vegetated and shrubbery. Uh, they just put a brand new septic in last year and stump grind most of that whole hill. So a lot of thing coming off is being absorbed in but they haven't done anything to trigger uh, stormwater management plan around the house. Mm 
Can you actually get a paper plan for these fellows now? For stormwater management? Yeah. If it's a simple one, then it's just drawn as easy as you know some grades, bringing it down to a mitigation area, uh, detention pond, rain garden, or something like that. If it's more complicated, then the surveyor draws it up with the certified block plans. Um, Acton or Shapley, either one of those, or Wakefield or Shapley, either one of those guys draw it out, and they're just kind of similar to this dropping in some stuff. Uh, first thing they go for is the infiltration steps, the cribbing filled with crushed stone, the drip line trenches. Um, the youth conservation kids, they haven't got into the infiltration beds where you're putting chambers underground and bringing it in and getting it into the ground. They haven't gotten into much of that, but any of the surveying and engineers would get into that. Uh, one of the projects we have on Great East right now, uh, they're mitigating the stormwater for that, and that's all engineered design. What triggers that? Just the difficulty in it? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, anything else? One question before we drink. Are there green, are there green pipes in that uh, two foot wall? Uh, down down on the bottom, yeah, I would think, to relieve the, the, the pressure yeah. on the back side. The thing is, if you're going to build that trench line, it's open stones. The most pipes will help. Oh, definitely. We'll leave the pressure on the back side. Start the All right, is there uh, a motion to adjourn? Yeah, you got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You will say what you're doing. Second. All those in favor? All right, uh, it is adjourned. Thanks for being here.